Greetings. I welcome those who are gathered in the sanctuary this morning, as well as those who are worshiping virtually, as we come together in one spirit to worship our God as St. Luke's United Church of Christ in Independence, Missouri. How comfortable are we with silence? We live in a culture of surround sound. The airwaves have become filled with the sound of a strong wind tearing through the mountains. It is difficult to hear the message of God through the noise when silence is the language of God. Today is the third Sunday in Lent. A halfway point of the Lenten season is but days away. At this point in our Lenten journey, we will hear the words of the prophet Jeremiah, who calls us to stop and look around. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask, where is the good way? We will follow not Jeremiah, but Elijah today on his own 40-day journey from whom we will hear the Lenten call to follow the ancient paths, the ancient path of silence. Holy Communion will be included in this morning's worship service. We practice an open table, meaning that you are invited to receive communion today regardless of your denominational affiliation or congregational membership. We receive communion not because we are worthy to do so, but because of the inclusive grace of God through Christ celebrated at the communion table. Those in the sanctuary should have received individually packaged communion elements by the door as you entered. If you didn't, you're invited to pick some up now from the table. Hold on to those after the blessing on communion. We will partake of communion together as a congregation. Those who are worshiping virtually are encouraged to gather something at hand to serve as elements of communion and participate in the sacrament during worship service, knowing that the shelter and presence of God abides with you and blesses your altar wherever you may be. Remember that today is the final day to order lilies for the Easter chancel. 
If you would like to order a lily in honor or memory of someone, please see Carol Lyon following the service. Lilies are $10 if paying by cash or check and $11 if you order online. The Linton study Give Us a Word will continue this Tuesday evening at seven o'clock. This week we will focus on desert virtues of solitude, silence, and work. Virtual participation is available live on Zoom for reminders about the study as well as to receive the Zoom link. Text the word desert to the number in the bulletin or in the comments of the live stream of today's service. Each session, including previous ones, are available on YouTube with each additional session being posted on Wednesday mornings. One great hour of sharing offering will be received next Sunday, March the 10th. One great hour of sharing is one of the special mission offerings of the United Church of Christ. This Lenten offering supports the disaster relief, refugee relief, and development ministries of the United Church of Christ within the wider church ministries. You can place your donation in the offering box, donate on the Vanco app or the St. Luke's website. Donation envelopes are available beside the offering box. Also remember that daylight savings time starts next Sunday. Set your clocks ahead one hour to be sure to arrive in time for worship. Those who are worshiping in person are invited to a time of refreshments and fellowship in the fellowship hall following the worship services. The Belarises are our hosts for today. Now, from all the places we may be today, let us focus our hearts and minds as we enter into the worship of our God.
Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Silence is praise to Zion dwelling God. God hears the prayer in it all. Enter into silence and know that God is God. The Lord of hosts is with us. Cultivate a quiet heart like a baby content in her mother's arms. Our souls shall hope now and always in God. The call to confession. Our lives are filled with sounds. Even our worship and prayers are filled with words. How often do we simply stop and dwell in silence? Does it frighten us to think what we might hear if we were to wait in silence? Step into the quietness of these moments of worship, quiet moments of confession and reflection, listening to the still small voice of the Spirit that bids us be still and know God more fully. Following a moment of silence, I invite you to join me when I begin the unison prayer of confession. Holy God, grant us peace in this noisy world that all our attention may be directed toward you. May your ways be made known to us through the calming of our hearts and quieting of our minds. Forgive us for paying more attention to voices of alarm and fear than to the assurance of your sustaining presence with us. Let your faithful and forgiving love surround us as we wait for you. Amen. The Lord is good to those who wait and hope in the Lord, to the ones who seek the Lord. It is good to wait in silence for the Lord's deliverance. In Christ we are forgiven and raised to newness of life and hope. Thanks be to God. may be seated. Invite my friends to come. Have our moments with many. You guys were moving faster than that on the playground. I know you can. All right. All right. Good to see everybody today. You know, Minnie Mouse is a, is a deep character. There's a lot to Minnie Mouse, more than meets the eye. I mean, what we see of Minnie is we know that she's a fun-loving mouse, right? She loves to hang out with Mickey and the gang at Mickey's Clubhouse. She loves all of the fun and the silliness of Goofy and all the others, right? She likes to sing songs at Mickey's Clubhouse. She's always in, in the party, right? She's a party animal. But there's more to her than that. I mean, there's a lot more to her than that. Uh, Minnie makes a very, very good church mouse. You know why she makes a good church mouse? Why? Because she's quiet. Quiet. She's quiet. And church mice are quiet for some reason. I think it's because, well, mice in general are quiet, right? You never hear a mouse be quiet like a mouse, right? In fact, you ever play that game, Quiet Mouse? Yeah, yeah. You know how to play Quiet Mouse? Oh, your mom's got to teach you how to play Quiet Mouse. If she don't, I will, and she'll thank me forever. It's one of our favorite games, Quiet Mouse. It's really good for the car, 
right? Am I right? It's really good for the, cool, for the car rides, but mice are typically very quiet creatures. Now, they can sing and have fun with the best of them. They can party it up at Mickey's Clubhouse. But overall, they're very quiet creatures. And that's what makes Minnie such a good church mouse, because she can be quiet. And that's important, especially, especially in church. I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to sit still and be quiet during a church service, because I don't know what's going on sometimes. But it's very important for us to learn to be quiet, because when we're quiet, can't only hear what I have to say during church when we're real quiet and I finally decide to, to stop talking in the silence. If we listen real quiet like a church mouse, we can hear in the stillness, maybe just God's whisper to us to, to know in our minds without any words that God loves us, that we're special to God. If we're busy singing songs, if we're busy even listening to sermons, if we're busy talking to our friends or getting all excitable, hearing all the noise and doing all the fun things, that's all right. But if that's all we ever do, we miss the time with being silent with God. So here's what I want you guys to do. This week, I want you to remember Minnie Mouse and just one, two, three, quiet mouse. Be quiet and just listen. And just, just in the quietness, think about the people who love you and know that that's God's expression of love for you too, right? Just think about people you love that you trust in and think about God and trusting in God. We need to be quiet like a church mouse, like many, okay? Thank you, God. And in the stillness of the moments, speak to us. Let us know that we are loved by our families and our congregation and most of all, by you. Amen. All right. One, two, three, quiet mouse. Away you go. Try it out. I hope that you have kept your prayer list and prayer requests in mind throughout the week. A lot of folks need prayer support and are encouraged by it. Uh, Lola is being treated at St. Luke's East Hospital. Her um, oxygen support was being lowered a little bit last night, which was a good sign, but she has a struggle. So be in prayer for Lola. Uh, Bill Keeney uh, had a heart uh, monitor and uh, pacemaker procedure this week. Uh, he's recovering well from that, but will be going to rehab for a couple of weeks to gain some strength. So keep Bill in your prayers and so many others who have transitions and challenges of diagnosis and illness. Keep one another in your prayer. Let's go now to God in prayer. Eternal God, keeper of silence, make a resting place for our busy minds. Soothe our restless hearts. Help us to release our desire to be busy and to produce, to do and to achieve. Slow us down. Kindle a love for stillness within us. Let us dwell a while in the sanctuary of our hearts, keeping vigil, sitting in silent wonder at the holy whispers we start to hear in the quiet. Let us rest in the great mystery of things, letting go of our need for answers leading us more deeply into the questions. Sustain us in the daily practice of seeking stillness, making space for the ocean of quiet to carry us on its waves ever deeper into the heart of your holy hush. To the lonely, O oh God, we pray that you would speak through the silence your word of companionship. To the sick and suffering, speak through the silence your word of comfort and wholeness. To the fearful and distraught, speak through the silence your word of comfort and hope. Let us lift our voices and pray as our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, 
as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Very nice. Thank you, folks. The scripture reading today comes from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19. You know the bulletin says verse 5, but let's go all the way back to verse 1 and get a little bit of the backstory. 1 Kings, chapter 19, beginning with verse 1. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, how he had killed all Baal's prophets with a sword. Jezebel sent a message to Elijah with this message. May the gods do whatever they want to me if by this time tomorrow I haven't made your life like one of them. Elijah was terrified. He got up and ran for his life. He arrived at Beersheba in Judah and left his assistant there. He himself went further into the desert a day's journey. He finally sat down under a solitary broom bush 
He longed for his own death. It's more than enough, Lord. Take my life because I'm no better than my ancestors. He lay down and slept under the solitary broom tree. Then suddenly a messenger tapped him and said to him, Get up, eat something. Elijah opened his eyes and saw flatbread baked on glowing coals in a jar of water right by his head. He ate and drank and then went back to sleep. The Lord's messenger returned a second time and tapped him. Get up, the messenger said. Eat something because you have a difficult road ahead of you. Elijah got up and ate and drank. He went refreshed by that food for 40 days and nights until he arrived at Horeb, God's mountain. There he went into a cave and spent the night. The Lord's word came to him and said, Why are you here, Elijah? Elijah replied, I've been very passionate for the Lord God of heavenly forces because the Israelites have abandoned your covenant. They have torn down your altars. They have Murdered your prophets with a sword, and I'm the only one left. And now they want to take my life too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord is passing by. A very strong wind tore through the mountains and broke apart the stones before the Lord. But the Lord wasn't in the wind. After the wind, speaking of wind, after the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire. But the Lord wasn't in the fire. After the fire, there was a sound. Then, quiet. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his coat. He went out and stood in the cave's entrance. A voice came to him and said, Why are you here, Elijah? He said, I've been very passionate for the Lord God of heavenly forces, because the Israelites have abandoned your covenant. They have torn down your altars. They have murdered your prophets with a sword. I'm the only one left. Now they want to take my life too. The Lord said to him, Go back through the desert to Damascus and anoint Hazael as king of Aram. Also anoint Jehu, Nimshai's son, the king of Israel, and anoint Elisha from abel Melak. Uh, Shephat's son to succeed you as prophet. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu will kill. Whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. But I preserve those who remain in Israel, totaling 7,000, all of those whose knees haven't bowed down to Baal and whose mouths haven't kissed him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we approach the midway point of the Lenten season, let's hear the word of the prophet Jeremiah. Stop at the crossroads and look around. Ask for the ancient paths. Where is the good way? Then walk in it and find a resting place for yourselves. So today, let's stop for a moment and look around at our desert surroundings for an ancient path that would lead us to a resting place. How about let's walk with Elijah on today's leg of the Lenten journey. Verse 8 of the scripture reading tells us that his path was a 40 days journey. Sounds like a fitting Lenten path to me. The path we find Elijah taking to Horeb is truly an ancient path. Walking the very same path Moses had walked Elijah finds himself where Moses had been before him. Horeb is another name for the mountain also known as Sinai. There, God spoke to Elijah just as he had spoken to Moses, saying, Go climb that mountain. Atop the mountain, as Moses had done before him, Elijah found himself at a crossroads where God was passing by. As it had been for Moses, Horeb became a mountain of revelation for Elijah. Maybe, maybe this was God's path more than it was either Moses or Elijah's path. A place in which God continued to make known God's presence and message to all who approached ascending the mountain. Like many who set out, Elijah was all in when the journey began. Verse 3 of the chapter tells us that when Elijah hit the road, he was 
literally running for his life. But alas, even ancient paths seem to find most travelers growing weary along the way. How are you doing on those Lenten disciplines by now, anyway? Now, 40 days in, Elijah's path seems to have come to a dead end, ready to call it quits. He crawls in to a hole in the ground. It seems to have been a gradual thing for Elijah, although the path was an ancient one, although Elijah had begun with fervor, although God had sent angels to care for him along the path, it seems Elijah had grown discouraged and struggled to be able to fully explain why he was there. And although he had technically completed his 40-day journey, Elijah was finding it difficult to hear the message of God. What's the problem? Why couldn't Elijah hear the voice of God? Does it depend on more than the path we choose or how long we stay on that path? Does our Lenten journey depend on more than asking for an ancient path and making a steadfast commitment to it? Lest we arrive at the empty tomb of our Lord after 40 days, depleted and still struggling to hear the voice of God, let's stop at this crossroads to look and ask Elijah to show us the way. Where is the good way? Part of Elijah's issue seems to be the other voices that were echoing in his head. The life-threatening cries of Jezebel were all Elijah could hear on the winds of the wilderness. Despite the enormous victory over the prophets of Baal, he had just won in a dramatic showdown at the great battle of the altars. The voice of Jezebel rang louder than God's almighty power. Elijah would tell us that it is hard to hear the voice of God when your mind is filled with other voices. Whether it is the sound of our worst fears or other kinds of distractions, our minds are overloaded with noise that make it hard to hear the voice of God. Desert spirituality would teach us that the journey into the desert places of our own souls requires climbing a mountain, leaving behind the noise of the world and all else that would hinder our ascent toward an encounter with God. Speaking for many of us, Guy Sales wrote that his own emotional and spiritual landscape sometimes sounds like Times Square on New Year's Eve or like a kindergarten class on the morning after Halloween with the kids hyped up on sugar, unable to sit down like church mice and listen during story time. Regardless of the path, regardless of our commitment to it, it is hard to hear God's voice, to connect to God amidst the noise that fills our days and nights, the noise that fills our ears and our heads. Sales goes on in his article to offer advice that might well benefit those who ask for and attempt to walk the ancient path. He says, sometimes it takes me a long time to find center and settle into stillness. More and more, he says, my contemplative practices include daily detox by which I have to come down from the high of addiction to others' opinions incessant input, stress-produced adrenaline, and ever-present anxiety about, well, you name it. Daily detox. Pete, that kind of sounds like, makes noise sound like an illness. Well, the words noise and nausea actually share etymological roots. Noise is or can lead to a sickness a sickness that needs regular treatment. Soren Kierkegaard wrote, the present state of the world and the wholeness of life is diseased. He says, if I were a doctor and my advice asked, I would reply, create silence. Bring people to silence. The word of God cannot be heard in the noisy world of today. Therefore, 
create silence. Silence is a much needed daily detox, the antidote of prevailing noise that rings out around us. Silence is needed not only for health, but as Elijah finds out, silence is often the language spoken by God. Elijah was used to hearing God in big and powerful ways, but it was not in the wind, nor in the earthquake, nor in the fire that God spoke to Elijah but in a still small voice, or as the original Hebrew says, in sheer silence, utter silence. Could it be that silence, sheer silence, is very often necessary for hearing the voice of God? Sound may serve to get our attention, but it is in silence that we get the message. The noise of earthquake, wind, and fire got Elijah's attention so that he was prepared to pay attention in the silence that followed. There's nothing more creative, nothing more redemptive than a divine word spoken in the silence, a word of companionship in the silence of loneliness, a word of forgiveness, the silence of alienation and hurt, a word of hope in the silence of despair. Sometimes the silence need not even be broken by sound. How much noise does an embrace make? How loud is an understanding or compassionate gaze or a clasp of hands? Silence is that moment when God does all the talking and we do all the listening. Elijah would tell us that even when we are committed to an ancient path, running as for our very lives for the whole of 40 days, we may still miss hearing the voice of God. On whatever path we may choose to walk, it is necessary at least from time to time, preferably on a regular basis, daily, many times a day throughout the day, to ascend the mountain, to step away from the noise of the world and all its distractions, to enter into silence, And just wait, creating a space in the middle of all the noise, space within ourselves that is prepared to listen and receive what the voice of God would speak to us. We need to sit in the silence until we become more fully aware of God's presence with us. Leading the way for the many desert fathers and mothers who would follow him into the desert was Abba Anthony the Great. Abba Anthony said, Just as fish die if they stay too long out of water, so the monks who loiter outside their cells or pass their time with men of the world lose the intensity of their inner peace. So, like a fish going towards the sea, we must hurry to reach the silence of our cell for fear that if we delay outside, we will lose our interior watchfulness. The prophet Jeremiah tells us to stop at the crossroads and look around, ask for the ancient paths, ask where is the good way, then walk in it and find a resting place for yourselves. Count Elijah among the desert fathers and mothers who tell us that the good way is the ancient path of silence. By way of the path of silence, we will hear the voice of God and find a resting place for ourselves. By way of the path of silence, we will gain purity of heart that encounters the very presence of God. By way of the path of silence, we will find our interior watchfulness that leads our parched souls to the life-giving waters that flow forth in the desert places of our soul. The ancient path of silence is the good way. Let us walk in it. Amen.
You may be seated. Here now this call to stewardship. Our words of praise for God and our words of encouragement to others in their time of need fall empty without actions that support those words. Let us not only speak words of commitment, let us act on those commitments as we bring our tithes and offerings, expressing our thanks and praise to God, and at the same time, making possible ministries of our congregation that make the presence of God known in life-changing ways. I invite you to pray with me as we dedicate our gifts and our lives to God. Gracious and giving God, with gratitude we dedicate these gifts to the work you have called us to do. We seek to help others as we have been helped, spiritually and physically. With these gifts we reach out in a spirit of gentleness to restore those who are alienated to community. May your name be praised by our lives and through the ministries of our congregation. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Hazel. Thank you.
in the silence of this table that is before us and in the silence of the bread and the cup that sits upon it is proclaimed the wondrous grace of our God. Proclaimed in the silence of this holy sacrament is the forgiveness that is offered to each and every one of us in Christ. Here today, through the silence of these moments, your own name being included in the invitation to this table, for it is the gift of God for the people of God. Here today, in the silence of this table, in the silence of the bread and the cup upon it, the healing word of God spoken to just you through the silence. Let us read together in unison the affirmation and renewal of our faith as printed in the comments and the bulletin. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. In the night our Lord was betrayed, after the Passover feast, he took bread, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, Say, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In a similar way, after the supper, Christ took the cup, he gave thanks and blessed it. He said, this cup is my blood, which is shed for many. As often as you drink this cup, do this in remembrance of me. Come, Holy Spirit, bless this bread and bless this cup. May the promise of your grace offered in the ancient path of this table calm our hearts and minds as our souls find rest in you. Amen. The body of Christ broken for us that we might become the body of Christ. Do this in remembrance of him. The cup of the new covenant, written upon our hearts by the Spirit of God. Do this in remembrance of Christ. I invite those who may comfortably do so to stand for the parting hymn, the uh, prayer of thanksgiving and parting hymn. Blessed God, you are our refuge and our strength, our help in times of trouble. We rejoice in your tender mercy and give you thanks and praise for the grace proclaimed at this table. Here your spirit has spoken to us words of hope and strength that shall carry us from this place, knowing that we are loved, beloved children. Guide us and keep us in your peace now and always. Amen.
Now, as you head back into the world of noise, may God shelter you and speak to you through the silence, calming your heart and quieting your soul. Be well.